Welcome back to Warm Your Shape. This is Debbie. Thanks for joining me today. Um, it's been a while since I uploaded a video, but I'm sure I'm not alone in saying uh, this year's been a strange one. But anyhow, um, today I was in the mood to paint chickens, <laughs> as you do. And uh, I pulled up some images on Pinterest and uh, just roughly sketched in some pencil lines with my uh, beloved Prismacolor pencil. I use indigo today and then just tried to go right into it. I'm using a limited palette, so I chose yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and ultramarine deep, a pretty classical kind of earthy palette. And I did that just because it's been a while since I painted and I always get a little nervous. And so this way I'm not overwhelmed by the color choices. And then you can focus more on value, which is definitely something that I struggle with. The sketchbook that I'm using today is something that I purchased few months back and I've been waiting to uh, have the time to record a video in order to show you guys. It is called the Strathmore Multimedia Sketchbook and it was recommended to me by um, a lovely lady that I follow on Instagram. I'll put her Instagram in the description below. She does a lot of gouache painting in here, and I think I've seen a few other like YouTubers use it as well, and it's really beloved. And um, I was looking for something with a paper that could handle gouache and watercolor, so um, so far I'm really liking it. The paper is quite thick, and the cover is like a velvety kind of finish very smooth and I thought I was going to really be bothered by the fact that it's a floppy cover. I've never had a sketchbook with a floppy cover before but um, it lays flat once you open it and um, so far so good. I'm, I'm really liking it and I'm really liking the way it handled the gouache so I'll give you guys an updated review once I've used it a little bit more but so far two thumbs up for me. I had intended to do an under uh, painting uh, with the watercolor. If you see, I pulled out the watercolor for a little bit there. And um, in the second image that I chose, there was kind of like this faded um, cloudy day. So the background was very, um, let's say diluted or just muted. So uh, I thought it would be easier to lay that in with some watercolor. And then I just like indicated a few like shadow spots. It might've been a good idea to actually do a full underpainting so I knew where to put things, but um, I didn't want to take too much time. Um, my intention with these was to just, you know, get back into the media and, um, the second one, I was actually going for speed. So I didn't do a full underpainting, but I think like indicating the trees with the watercolor was very helpful. So as I look back on the paintings, I think that I did have an issue with the light from the window coming in and out and changing the color relationship. So that's something that maybe I should um, be a little bit more aware of in the future. 
and I think that it was much more um, cohesive at the beginning, although the values weren't correct. I think the relationships between the, the values were correct, if that makes sense. <laughs> and I, I had an epitome uh, yesterday while doing this that um, I think that the thing about water-based media and the thing that is hard about it is that it actually looks the best when you can make the least marks. <laughs> so if you can get the value right on the first pass, it looks fresher and cleaner and nicer. <laughs> but that is extremely difficult and that takes a lot of understanding about what you're doing and almost like mental planning and i never really understood before why people thought watercolor was so difficult and that's that's it i guess um uh, maybe i was just naive about playing around with it and what i was doing it just attracted me because uh I, I like using it, but um, I think I'm going to have to do a little bit more practice with mixing color and mixing tones and values because I, I would really like to have that kind of finish. I mean, you don't have to, but I think that's what, um, when I feel like I've done something well, it's because that that's happened. And um, I think that's something I'm going to strive to work towards. And maybe not so much with watercolor because I do use it more in an illustrative way, but I, I, I like enjoy gouache for a more painterly painting style. And although I do mostly studies, eventually, maybe I'll do some gouache painting of my own. And um, it's just a skill I really would like to build. So you may have noticed that I just um, pulled out some ceramic palettes for this and just did little daubs of color. And um, that was fine because I was only going to be using a little bit of paint. But the other reason for doing that is that I had left my wet palette in the sun and I hadn't opened it in a really long time, months really. And I went to use it yesterday and of course it was full of mold so i gotta clean that out and it's toast so i had the full intention of using it more regularly but when i'm working i really just don't have the time so uh that was maybe a little short-sighted on my part i hate wasting paint like that and um, maybe I just can't keep a wet palette as much as I would like to. So the alternative is to either keep doing this with the little splooges of color on, on ceramic plates or set up a dry palette and see how that goes. I'm not keen on it but I've never done it before, so maybe uh, maybe I would like it in the end. From what I've seen, you tend to get a chalkier uh, kind of color because you won't get that like creamy thickness and you won't have like a thick layer of paint. But um, yeah, maybe it's just more practical. I mean, when I'm at home, I can just splooge out the color, 
but um, I think I'm going to try a dry palette and I'll make sure to film that for you guys as I set it up. Maybe I'll do a few more really custom colors and um, yeah, I think I might try to replicate some of the colors that I use a lot in my watercolor palette so that way it's like a direct translation from what I'm used to. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's just an idea I have going right now, but I definitely think that um, that's something that I am going to do and uh, hopefully not waste so much paint in the future. So I'm pretty pleased on the way that these little chicken illustrations, or studies rather, came out. Um, my intention was just to do a bit of practice and not to like have a completed painting, you know? It, this was a study stuff. I didn't really define all the feathers or anything like that. And with the second one, I was actually going for speed, so I tried to get that one down as quickly as possible. And uh, I think that's a good practice to um, decide what you're going to do with your, with your practice time, you know, and what your intention is, so that when you're like in the middle of it, you're not um, coming up with new I don't know, like, demands on yourself. And um, if you know what you want to practice, then um, you have more of, yeah, like setting the intention really helps you to stay on track and maybe not get uh, distracted by other things. Because there's so much that you can really focus on in a study. And, um, and if you're really good, you can do them all. <laughs> I'm not really good, so I have to pick and choose. And also, I, I don't intend to spend four hours on these tiny little things. I just wanted to get my muscles going, do a little bit of value, study, um, remember how to use this medium, and, uh, do a little observation on chickens because uh, that's another thing I like to do before I I do illustrations on um, a subject. I like to do some studies of the real thing. I think it helps you uh, to get the personality of the animal or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, I highly recommend it if you if you do kind of cartoony stuff, um, take a look at the real thing, draw it first, and you'll get, a, I think, just um, more, more character. I always underestimate how busy I am when I'm working. And I think I'll be able to do all of this extra stuff, but I really can't. And then, um, yeah, things have to be put on hold. So I kind of put this channel on hold for a bit. Um, I also am participating in a local Christmas market here in my town. And I was getting all my Christmas merchandise ready for that and things printed. I had some cards printed and uh, I made a bunch of sticker sets and stuff. So uh, yeah, I was busy with making Christmas. Uh, but now that that's done, I'll have a, a bit more time to spend with you guys here. And I'm looking forward to that. I have a few video ideas planned. I did film a bunch of stuff in the fall 
I'll see if I can cut it together into something cohesive. Uh, hopefully I can salvage all that footage. Um, but I'll be posting a bit more regularly now. And thanks for joining me again. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope you're still drawing in your sketchbook too. Thanks for coming by guys. I'll see you soon. If you want to see some of the Christmas items that I have um, produced in the last little bit, they're up in my Etsy shop and uh, the link will be in the description box below. Um, yeah, feel free to check it out. I'm pretty happy with all the little, the little dude heads that I put together. Oh, I guess I should mention that I do have a Patreon now and I'm doing a monthly sticker club. So if you are interested, um, the link will also be in the description box and I do a monthly sticker mail out and I'd love it if uh, you joined in. Okay, bye for real now.